CNN's Arwa Damon reports that the story, what really happened, might be more complicated than what the Pentagon is saying. And we should warn you, the images in her report are graphic and disturbing. A small body is carried down the dark stairs. The rescue workers speak in thick whispers. Wait, 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 one warns. It's stuck. They gently coax a tiny child's corpse out from under a large slab of concrete. It's a little girl. Another small body, a boy, is carefully wrapped in a blanket. This is what is left behind after U.S. Special Forces conducted an overnight raid in Syria. Later, the White House announced that they had, quote, removed the leader of ISIS, Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi al-Qurayshi. But the reality of what happened is uglier than that simple statement. And the fog of war is filled with questions. The owner of the building says that two families lived here. One man, his wife, and three children. And his sister lived upstairs with her daughter, Abu Qutayba says. Seven bodies were found here. President Biden says it was al-Qurayshi who detonated a bomb, killing himself and his family. But were there more people in the house that night? We don't know yet, but in all, at least 13 people were dead in the raid's aftermath, including six children. Eyewitnesses described helicopter gunships hovering overhead for hours, warnings to evacuate the house and surrender, intense gunfire, hearing multiple explosions. Light clashes occurred, and then the helicopter struck with machine guns, this man remembers. One of the strikes was here, and the rest were striking the targeted house. Did the U.S. forces fire on other buildings? Footage from the scene and the surrounding areas show damage to multiple other buildings as well. This child's body, green socks on tiny feet, was ripped in half. Taking out ISIS's leader may be a win for America. It may put a temporary damper on ISIS's abilities. But ISIS will rise again, and the war on terror will leave more innocents in its wake.